good. Well, you know, n nothing really new uh, uh, after watching the Arkansas film. You know, I think that um, very pleased with the way our, our players battled, you know, in the game, really competed hard, uh, kept coming back in the game, had to overcome a lot of adversity. Uh, I think especially, you know, pleased with Jake, you know, after a couple, you know, early interceptions, really played better and better as the game went on, which uh, I think speaks volumes for him as a competitor in terms of the way he's maturing and just focusing on, you know, do, doing what he needs to do to help our team. Um, but, you know, there's still the issue of, um, you know, a lot of areas where we can improve based on just basic fundamental execution. Uh, and, you know, we've always had a system around here of, you know, here's what you need to do, here's how you need to do it, here's why it's important to do it that way, and you got to have the discipline to execute it, you know, down in and down out. And um, I, I just think we can need to continue to improve, you know, in that area so we can focus on getting things right um, and we won't have some of the negative plays that uh, we're having on both sides of the ball. I mean, we've given up, you know, a couple of big plays at the end of games that, you know, shouldn't have happened. And um, we've had a few too many negative plays on offense. Um, you know, we're especially pleased that Reggie Raglan was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. He certainly had a phenomenal game. And I think he had 26 production points or something, which is the highest of any anybody this season. Uh, you know, we recognize Calvin Ridley and Kenyon Drake. Um, on offense and Ashawn Robinson and Jaron Reed along with Reggie on defense and Cyrus Jones and J.K. Scott um, on special teams. Uh, we don't really have any injury, you know, updates or anybody that's injured that um, is, is a problem. Um, so, you know, obviously the game coming up is, you know, our primary focus right now against a very good team. Uh, you know, Texas A&M is ranked in the top 10 and they're undefeated and you know, Kevin Sumlin has done a very, very good job there. His record, you know, certainly indicates that. And um, they they beat some really good opponents and, and, you know, are playing much, much better on defense. And um, I think John Chavis has done a really good job there. They're not giving up as many points. They're a lot tougher. They're sounder in what they're doing. Uh, and offensively, they are one of the top teams in our league. Um, had a lot of really good skilled players. They really worked hard on trying to create balance, you know, on their offense this year in terms of being able to run the ball a little bit better. But they're still, you know, one of the most prolific passing teams in the country. Cal Allen has done a, a really good job at quarterback for them. His passing efficiency rating is one of the tops in the country. Uh, they score a lot of points. They make a lot of big plays. Uh, and this is certainly going to be, you know, a challenge for our defense. So, um, you know, tough game on the road, but our players have to focus on what we need to do to execute and do our job well. Coach, we'll start with Cecil. Coach, to, to revisit the last game for a second on the, the interception return that set up their first touchdown, uh, after that play, Cam Robinson was called for unsportsmanlike conduct, and there's there's some video that indicates that, that maybe some of that was instigated on the, the opposing team's sideline. Have you seen it? Have you talked to Cam about it? And what was your reaction? If no, you I, I really hadn't seen it. Um, this is something that just come up here recently for me. Um, I have not seen it. Um, all, what I did see was Cam got blocked pretty well on the play by one of their players. Um, in our tape, he got up and shoved another player uh, in frustration. And that's basically what I saw, and that's what I assumed the penalty was for and about. So that's really all I can comment on. And um, I think when you retaliate and push a player, um, you can expect to get a penalty. Uh, the rest of it I can't really comment about because I hadn't really seen it. Coach, I just want to see, what have you seen from Cyrus Jones this year? How do you feel like he's come along in corner, and how well do you feel like he's played this season? Well, Cyrus has done a nice job for us. You know, he plays with a lot of maturity. He's got a lot of experience. He's a very bright guy. He's got a good understanding of what he needs to do to be successful and how he needs to play. And uh, he certainly played that way on a, you know, with more consistency. 
you know, throughout this whole season and um, hadn't given up a lot of big plays. And, um, you, you know, he's been, you know, really one of our best performers, I think, if you sort of look at the overall defense. I think his leadership uh, has been a positive for us in the back end with the, some of the younger guys that, you know, we have in the secondary. So um, done a really good job on special teams as a punt returner. Uh, getting the ball fielded, not having issues with that, and making some positive returns. So I think he's been very productive. Is, does Cam have any nagging injuries that's limiting his play? And, and what have you thought of his play this year? Well, you know, Cam uh, wasn't able to practice as much last week as um, what he usually does. And I think it's pretty typical that, you know, when a player can't practice, um, you know, sometimes it affects their performance a little bit. So, um, you know, I, I think that was an issue with Cam this past week. Um, you know, Cam is a very good player for us. He's played really well at times this year. Um, I don't think he would say or I would say that this last game was one of his best games, but um, we have a lot of confidence in him as a player and uh, we expect have a high expectation for you know, how we'd like for him to play and how he needs to play to help our offense be effective. Uh, just when watching the film, what are you seeing from the nickel and dime defensive groups when they've been on the field and how much do you expect to be in those looks this week? Well, you know, I think we'll be in that look. They'll be in four wide outs and three wide outs and that's when we're in those. So they determine how much we're in them. Um, but, you know, we, we, we've given up fewer big plays, um, which is a real positive. Uh, we've stopped the run a little better out of those um, fronts, and I think it's primarily because our front has done a really good job. And uh, if you always have to add a guy in the box to stop the run, it really, you know, puts you in a, a, a little more vulnerable coverage, uh, which we have done, had to do less of that this year, which is a compliment to our front. Uh, and the more we can continue to do that, I think the um, maybe the, the better we can play in nickel. Uh, I think when we have to pressure to stop them, or to get pass rush, uh, or to add a guy to the box, you know, then you become more vulnerable in terms of giving up big plays and a much more difficult coverage. I think you touched on that a little bit, but going back to the beginning of the year, uh, the big talk was the three big things: the, the turnovers. Uh, the uh, explosive plays and uh, third downs, stopping that on defense. Uh, do six games, where do you think those areas have improved? Or well, not? we've improved, you know, in those areas. We've gotten more turnovers. I still think we'd like to attack the ball more and, you know, maybe get more fumble, fumbles out, uh, recovered fumbles. Uh, we had one that we got out. Reggie got one out in this past game um, on a quarterback scramble, but um, that's the one area that we'd like to continue to improve on. I think our third down. Uh, getting off the field on third down has improved to some degree, but um, we're, we're going to have to continue to do that to be successful, especially against a team like we play this week. And, you know, we haven't given up as many big plays, um, and this is a big play offense that we're playing, so um, it'll be imperative that we do a good job in that regard in this game. You just touched on it there, uh, the big plays that Texas A&M has. I think they have about a dozen of 40 yards or more. What do they do that, that uh, tends to produce those big plays? Well, you know, they've got really good skill guys. Um, they spread you out a lot. You know, sometimes they're in empty. Sometimes they're just in four wads with the back. So, um, you know, and the skill players that they have are, you know, capable of beating you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I think they have really, really good receivers. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be a real challenge for uh, us to be able to cover them and keep them cut off and not give them plays down the field. But, you know, they have a really good play action schemes that go with, you know, some of their running plays that uh, make it really difficult. Uh, they utilize formation into the boundary. They do a lot of things that uh, are real challenges when it comes to big plays. And if you want to make one mistake when you're that spread out, you know, got a chance for a guy to catch it and run with it, which they do a lot of that as well. I had two questions. Uh, secondary seems like has given up fewer big plays and made some big plays, with interceptions and everything the last few games. Has that group consistently 
progressed as this year's gone along? Well, you know, we're, we're getting better. Um, we've, you know, st still got a ways to go, I think. But uh, I think, you know, the, the, the group has played um, with a little more consistency this year. Uh, I think that has helped us not to give up big plays. We've played smarter. We've made less mental errors. We've communicated better. Uh, and we put ourselves in position to make plays. And guys have been able to make them when they get the opportunity. So, you know, hopefully the challenge that we have this week will be able to step up and do a nice job against, you know, the best passing team I think we played to this point. And, and, and Reggie Ragland, is he a guy that once he decided to come back for senior season really kind of has, has he gotten better in some areas as good as he was last year? Well, you know, I think Reggie has improved. He's worked hard. You know, you would never know that there's any difference in terms of how he approached, you know, his work last year as relative to this year. And um, he's, he's really responded well to the role of being the signal caller and the team leader and um, done a really nice job for us and had a really, really good game this last game. Coach, wanted to ask you about Adam Griffith. He started off 0 for 4, and he made a lot of them in a stretch. Now he's kind of went back and forth. What, what do you attribute to his up and down this year? Well, you know, he's very, very capable, and um, he's practiced well. Uh, he's made a lot of good kicks in practice. Um, you know, I think, you know, mentally, you got to have a positive attitude about what you're doing. You got to believe in it. You got to trust it. You got to think about what does it take to make the kick, not think about what um, what is going to happen if it if I miss and I think a lot of that is you know eliminate the negatives uh, and focusing on the process of what you have to do to be consistent in what you're doing because there's if you watch the guy practice if you watch him warm up I mean he's as good a kicker as anybody in the country but you got to be able to take it to the game by focusing on the very things that allows you to um, have the success and practice that you have. You mentioned limiting negative plays. They've been very good at disrupting people, especially with Garrett and Hall. Talk about that challenge for your offensive front. Well, I don't think there's any question about the, 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 the fact that they've got some good edge rushers. You know, um, I think we've all seen and played against John Chavis quite a bit in the years at LSU and know he's got lots of good pressures and he's going to do things to try to get those guys in one-on-one -on -one situations and uh, they're good edge rushers and uh, they've been very, very disruptive. And if we don't block the edges well, we'll, we'll have some issues. So uh, these are challenges to our protection uh, and the protection scheme that we present, um, you know, to help our players have a chance to limit these guys being disruptive in the game. And them has a lot of uh, second-year players that are, are big for them, quarterback, receivers, and that kind of thing. What kind of progress have you seen them made from last year to this year? Well, I thought they had a good team last year. You know, we just kind of had a crazy game with them, and things went right for us, and not much went right for them. But um, they, they had a good year last year. Those guys have all gotten better. Um, you know, Cal Allen became the quarterback last year, so he got a lot of experience. Uh, he's a lot better player now than – than then, and I think he played very well then. Uh, but the knowledge and experience has helped him. Uh, their receivers are really, really good. The addition of their number one receiver, Kirk, who's a freshman, um, it's a great returner, you know. I mean, uh, as well as has 32 receptions. Um, they've got they've got good, really good skill players. Their players have gotten better. They've improved, which is a sign of a good program. Yeah, I was going to ask about Christian Kirk. Just what has he brought to the table for them? And is he the kind of player that you assign one cornerback to kind of follow around or keep your kind of more typical defensive system? Well, he, he doesn't really line up outside. All right? He really lines up in the slot quite a bit. Uh, so you can't sort of just put a guy on him, especially a guy that's not used to playing on the slot. Uh, corners usually play guys out here. Uh, but he is a... Uh, very explosive, uh, great run after catch guy, um, very good out of a break, very quick, has good hands, uh, great balance and body control. So, you know, this guy's, you know, a really, really good player. And 
you would never know he was a freshman by watching him play. So, um, you know, he doesn't play that way. He has a lot of confidence and uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes in terms of what he's doing. So he's got a good understanding uh, of what, what, what's required, and he does it very effectively. Okay. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.